Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly style snack. If you're new here, I am April, and every Wednesday, I go live and share a style snack with you. And today, it's not actually about style. Um, I had a change of plan of what I want to share with you today, and it's based on what's going on in my own life. And I know I'm not the only one. I want to talk, well, first of all, let me say, go ahead and leave your comments, questions, uh, experiences in, in the comment section and we'll chat after. That's the very best part is when we get to chat. Um, and I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on this. I want to talk about committing to self-care. Um, it's not a luxury. There is always a price to pay. The last year and a half has been uh, sprinting a marathon for us. Um, I've been working 24-7 on three, which is actually 15 new courses on top of the seasonal classic wardrobe guides, a cross country move, getting six kids adjusted to new life, new home renovations, a water leak that meant we had to move out of our house, including our furniture for five weeks, a death in the family, illness, hormone replacement therapy. Um, and that's on top of the same chaos and uncertainty everyone else is going through together right now in the entire world. Some of these are great things. Some of them are terrible things. Some of them were outside of my control. Many of them were my own doing. And most of them were happening simultaneously. All of them were a big deal on their own. And in my usual determination to do everything, be everything and have everything, I took on way too much and I took no time to care for my own needs. And, and this is not about having a pity party for me. We all have a lot on our plates. That's the society we live in now. And uh, we're expected to overdo it. And I am threadbare right now. It, and it didn't have to be this way. I made choices for a lot of these things. It was my choices. I chose well-meaningly to overextend myself. I chose not to make myself a priority. I, in many ways, chose where I am right now. And now I am choosing to make it right. Is this the first time I have made these mistakes? Sadly, no. <laughs> But I think I'm learning. This has been maybe the most painful lesson in this I've ever learned. Um, and I have been very conscious about making sure I don't wind up where I was. So like I said, I, I had an entirely different style snack scheduled for today, planned out for today. But this is so uh, much on my mind right now. And I'm it's something that we, especially I feel like as women, struggle with. I felt like it was important to share my commitment to myself, and hopefully it will help some of you as well. I am returning to my habits of self-care, and so for the next few weeks, um, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about, it, and I hope that it's helpful to, to you as well. Uh, I know, I think that a lot of this is, some, is stuff that gets talked about around January 1st, but um, the start of the new school year is really a wind up to the craziest part of the year. It starts with school starting and then um, we have, you know, Labor Day, and then we have four birthdays in October in one weekend in our, in our family. We have fall break, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then Christmas and New Year's. And for you, it may be Hanukkah or other holidays, but it just gets busier and busier and busier starting with back to school. 
and more and more chaotic. So for me, this is a very important time to talk about this because I need to set myself up not to fall down again, not to crash and burn and not to wind up right where I just dug myself out of. So what does self-care look like? Uh, truthfully, it looks like it looks different for everyone. I've read a lot of self-care posts over the years, and sometimes I think, yes, that would help me. And sometimes I think that would add to my pain. This is not your typical list of bubble baths and lunch with friends, although those can be great options if that is what self-care looks like for you. I want to get down to the fundamentals of self-care, and I hope as you read this, you can take the helpful parts, what's helpful to you, because you're a unique individual, and leave what doesn't serve you, because not every one of these tips is going to be for you. So my first tip is probably an unexpected one, but it is to wear what you are drawn to. And that might sound <laughs> like an odd tip, but um, what I wear really affects how I'm feeling and what I need. It varies from day to day. For the last nine months, I needed black clothes and stabby accessories. I did not want any color not even white to lighten it up a bit. Navy, espresso brown, and black. And that is mostly what I've worn for the last nine months. I also craved comfort, so nothing really restrictive. Does that mean I was in yoga pants and an old t-shirt? No, my favorite jeans are very comfortable. For me, comfort also has to do with being fuss-free. Nothing I have to adjust, tug at, or secure. What I find soothing in my clothing won't necessarily be what you find soothing. So if you put something on and feel that instant, no, take it off. Listen to yourself. I have been wearing some color lately because I have finally dug myself out from under this giant heap of stress that I climbed under, <laughs> put myself in. But actually, um, and now that things have calmed down, right? But today I'm back in a head-to-toe dark neutral outfit because I need it. I'm wearing espresso brown, head-to-toe. That's what I need today. But over the last couple of weeks, I've worn uh, cyan and red and purple and burgundy because I finally could. I needed black this year. Other times I need color. And... Other times I need triangles and pointy sharp jewelry. And other times I need no jewelry. Listen to what you need and honor that. I, there were times I felt like I should wear color because you all get tired of seeing me in all black. And then I was like, yeah, well, no, too bad. I need black and that's just where we're going to be. Black and stabby might not be it for you, but what is? My second tip is to move your body. <laughs> Self-care has to include caring for your physical body. And for all of us, that means some kind of exercise or movement. It might be a walk around your neighborhood. That is one thing that my husband and I were trying to do. We didn't do it every day, but one of us would just message or text the other and say, let's go on a walk. We would put on sneakers, get the dog, grab some poop bags and do a lap around our neighborhood And our neighborhood is not big. So, you know, it might be a 10 minute walk, a 15 minute walk. If the weather was really nice, we would do two laps around the neighborhood, but it made such a difference to get out of our desk chairs and go outside and move our bodies. It can be more. It could be going on a run, doing yoga, CrossFit, Pilates, swimming, whatever movement you'll do and feels good to you. There have been times in my life that I was in really great shape and so strong. And then I've had times when I had to stop exercising. Um, 
because, you know, I had a high risk pregnancy. I had health issues that didn't allow me to exercise. And then I got back into shape and then, um, I was doing hot yoga and that worked with my health issues. And then 18 months ago, I got, I very badly sprained my ankle and it took a year for it to feel okay to exercise on. But by then we'd moved and I was too busy and tired to find a new place to go. But really when I'm that busy and that tired, I need it even more, which my husband tried to tell me many times, but I couldn't even, I couldn't even deal with that mentally. One of the things we're going to talk about this month is how to start and stick to an exercise routine because I am back on the exercise bandwagon as of a week ago. And I confess, I have whined, complained, and pouted about it. I have not been a good sport about it because I'm so frustrated by how weak I am right now. Starting over is the hardest part of, of an exercise routine, but it's amazing for my brain and my soul. And um, I thought, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you when we talk about the exercise one. I mean, like my husband's been trying to support me in doing this exercise and I have been a brat. I'll be honest. I've been real brat about it because I want to do it, but I do not want to do it. And I, it's astounding how weak I am right now. I am the most deceptively unfit person it's bad. It's really bad. It was embarrassingly bad how weak I am when I, anyway, we'll talk about it later. And of course, always, always follow your doctor's advice on physical activity. Like I said, for several years, I, I walk around the block, which just took about all I had for a day. So, um, always do what's, what's right for you based on your doctor's recommendations. Next, we need to feed and hydrate our bodies. Loving your body also means nourishing it. Over the last year and a half, I have been eating like a toddler and I consider myself a foodie. I love food, but instead of making myself a proper lunch, I was eating Totino's pizzas every day. I lived on those in college and I still love them the way I love blue box macaroni. They're nostalgic. <laughs> but they do nothing to nourish my body other than provide calories so I don't fall down. Sometimes I eat cheese and crackers with a little pepperoni on it, also not my best option, or I grabbed fast food, which is actually worse than the other two options. I convinced myself that my daily smoothie was making up for this very poor nutrition, and that's not true. Honestly, I have never been motivated to make food just for myself. Make a meal for my family? Yes. Make a meal for myself? No. Like to me, that never has felt like worth the bother, the time to make it and clean it up. And that's not self care, is it? I'm not making my nutrition and fueling my body with good nutrients a priority because without good nutrients, and food, our bodies can't work properly. I was talking about this with a friend yesterday and how important it is to keep the thing, the insides of our bodies clean. Does that mean I'm going on some extreme whole foods kick? No, <laughs> not going that far, but I am bad adding back some things like, um, like vegetables, you know, just taking the time to also make vegetables. Like, <laughs> If it's not ready and easy to grab, I haven't been eating it. If it couldn't go into the toaster oven, I wasn't eating it. Making sure I get enough protein in a day so I can build the muscle I'm after. I always struggle to come up with an, um, an idea in the moment. Like it's a joke between my husband and I. He'll say, do you need anything from the grocery store? And I freeze. I have no idea. Probably. I don't know. And then he'll place the grocery order and about 30 seconds after he does, I'll go, Oh, I need spinach. Oh, cause I put spinach in my smoothie. So I was getting a vegetable every day. <laughs> That's part of my justification. It really annoys him that I do that. Uh, the, not the spinach, but that I it's 30 seconds after he is done placing the order. I'm like, Oh, actually there are 30 things I need. Can we add that to the order? 
Um, but having a list of food, of things that I can make myself that are nourishing, tasty, quick and easy, fast cleanup has, is making it much easier for me to not reach for the Totinos. And let's talk about water. I love water. I'm a water drinker. That's mostly, mostly all I drink. But for the last couple of weeks, I've been perpetually dehydrated and I knew it. I knew I was dehydrated. I could, I just knew. I was too busy to get up from my desk and go refill my water bottle. And last night I paid the price in the form of horrible foot cramps. It was awful. Every time I drifted off to sleep, the cramping started and it was alternating feet for half the night. Usually, because this happens to me when I get dehydrated, usually one glass of water will stop it. I drank another 45 ounces of water by the time I was fine. And this was over the course of several hours by the time it, the cramping finally stopped. That didn't mean I get to sleep though. I was up the rest of the night running to the bathroom because I just drank 45 ounces of water. So let's all drink water before bedtime. I'll just have a little right now. I need at least two of these, preferably three a day for my body to be hydrated when I'm not exercising. Add exercise on top of that and I need more. Rest. My brain never, ever shuts up. It talks to me constantly and it is exhausting. About four years ago, I realized that I have to replenish myself by being alone. And, and since my brain is like being trapped at a party I can never leave, I have to find a way to disengage from my brain and everyone else around me. So because my brain is constantly going, being alone and reading something educational, researching anything and learning are still very active and it just revs my brain up and that's not restful to me. Being alone and gardening which is one of my very favorite things to do, is it restful to my body, even if it nourishes my soul. The only ways I can make my brain and my body stop are to take 30 minutes to an hour alone in my room and read something strictly for pleasure. It cannot have any beneficial thought provoking purpose purely pleasure reading can't learn from it or it doesn't count and for me it's usually uh historical fiction novels that's my favorite genre um or i can watch a show but i prefer to read it transports me somewhere else and i'm finally able to get out of my head that's hard for me to do and reading is is one of the only ways i can do it Sometimes I take power naps or rest and listen to a guided meditation. I lie there with my eyes closed, listen to guided meditation. Sometimes I might go to sleep. Um, I might do both, but I set an alarm because if I sleep too long, like take an actual nap, it makes me groggy and grouchy. And um, then I really can't sleep that night. And also knowing the alarm is set means I can let go and not worry about sleeping for too long um, and being late, like picking up our daughter from the bus stop, you know? So um, I can really just let go and fall asleep for like 20 minutes is ideal for me. It could be different for you. Getting up and getting dressed every single day has been part of my life, my whole life. Even when I had infant triplets, even when I had five kids in three years. For me, that is self-care. It makes everything about my day go better. It's a way of loving myself, showing up for myself and saying, I am worth this time to feel good about how I look all day long. I don't do it for anybody else. This is for me, only me. Those babies didn't care. 
And back then my husband traveled all the time for work. So he wasn't around. It's not like he had, you know, he was seeing me. I did it for myself and I still do. Getting dressed doesn't have to be a two hour ritual. It doesn't have to be Oscars worthy. I don't have time for that. But if, if two hours is self care for you, then you should do that. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing proposition, but this is probably one of the only self care things I have never, never negotiated on. I've always done it and I can get ready in 20 minutes. If I follow all of my own rules, but knowing my style makes that really so much easier. If getting dressed is a struggle because you have a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear, I have a free masterclass called five steps to find the right clothes for you. And that can get you started on making, putting, or putting together outfits easy for you because that can be your roadblock. Next is sleep. <sighs> Speaking of sleep, <laughs> it's been my enemy. It used to be my superpower and my sleep is all over the place because of hormones. I have reached that age and stage. I remember my mom used to talk about not being able to sleep. And I was like, how is that even possible? I couldn't even comprehend it. I could sleep anywhere, anytime for extraordinary lengths of time. And now I can't usually, well, it depends. I either struggle to go to sleep, struggle to stay asleep, or I wake up way too early. Usually the only way I can get more sleep is to go to bed earlier. So instead of being a hero, and by hero, I mean martyr, and staying up too late, doing too much, I am making, I'm going back to making it a priority to start getting ready for bed at nine and drinking water early in the day so I can go to sleep. I went to bed at nine last night and I, I don't think I slept until at least two. It was, anyway. And then I was up all 19. Um, I shower the night before, which helps me relax. It helps me wash the day away. It gives me another 20 minutes of alone time. And it's part of how I get ready in 20 minutes every day. Then I can get in bed by 930, spend a few days talking to my husband, planning out the next day, getting all the thoughts out of my head and try to have the lights out by 10. Sleep is critical and it helps no one if you're not getting enough rest. I have learned some things that help me with my sleep. And um, if that's something you want to talk about another day, let me know in the comments. Next, you have to replenish yourself. We have all heard the saying, you cannot draw from an empty well. And the comparison to putting on your own oxygen mask first before you help others is another. It's easy. In fact, I would say it's even expected as women that we take on the martyr role and care for everyone else's needs before ours. It's built into our societal expectations and it's celebrated. We are praised for it, but it is so damaging. I am as guilty of it as anyone. It feels selfish to fill my well when I know my children have needs that need to be met. But you know what's selfish? Snapping at my kids because I've ignored my needs and I'm on empty. Growling at my husband because I didn't take some time to replenish myself. That's selfish. So think about what fills your personal well. For me, it's that alone time. For you, it could be something else. For you, it could be spending time with friends. Get a daily dose of positivity. I've talked about many times what an enormous impact listening to Brooke Castillo's Life Coach School podcast has had on me. It really helps me get in a positive, empowered mindset for the day. I used to listen to her while I got ready or while I drove places, but I got out of the habit when I stopped driving anywhere because no one could go anywhere. I went months without getting in my car. <laughs> And during the, the 18 months of craziness, I also stopped listening because I thought one more input would fry my brain. But I realized I have spiraled into negative self-talk and doubt again. So I am queuing up 
one of my very favorite episodes from her. It's number 18, how to solve any problem. It is exactly what I need to jumpstart me. Okay, so how do you find time for self-care? You're busy. You are busy. I know you're busy. Here's how I do it. Schedule it in. And I mean that literally. Schedule in your self-care on your actual calendar with an alarm on your phone, whatever you need to do. But we, you've probably heard the Stephen Covey analogy that if you take a container, that's your day, and you have large rocks, which are your essential things, medium rocks are your important things, and sand is everything else, and you have to fit it into that container, if you put the sand and small rocks in first, the large rocks will never fit. So you schedule your large rocks, your essential items first in your calendar. The important things are the medium rocks go next. And then you pour in everything else, which is the sand to fill up the empty spaces that are left. If you don't schedule it, it's not happening. Um, and then say no. Stop saying yes to every request made of you. I didn't take outfit pictures for about six months this year because it was one thing too many. Something had to give. And that was one of the things. And, you know, I heard from a lot of you that you missed it, that you didn't like seeing stock images on the blog posts and, um, you know, where did I go? And I, I know that was disappointing to a lot of people, um, but I had to, I had to stop it was, I couldn't. And I had to say no to that. I was recently asked to take dinner to a family with a new baby. Food is love in my family. And I usually say yes to something like that, mostly because I appreciated it so much when I was in those first few weeks with a newborn. But this time I just had to be honest. And I said, usually I would love to, but I am struggling to find time to help my own kids this week. And I can't do it. I would love to help another time. Yes, I felt guilty for saying no. I also felt tremendous relief for not piling one more thing on myself when I was already overloaded. Saying no was the right thing to do. And then finally, be honest with the people in your life. Have you ever talked to the important people in your life and explained your needs? Well, first you have to know what your needs are and then share them. Share what would help you. Don't assume they know. That is not fair to them. If you don't communicate what you need, they can't support you. I had an honest conversation with my husband several years ago about my needs once I figured them out, and now he's mindful of them as well. He's often more mindful of them than I am, and when I get edgy or grouchy, he sends me to my room for a break, and I love him for it because I'm in martyr mode. No, I have to stay out here. I have to finish dinner. I have to help so-and-so with their homework laundry. No, you're grouchy. Go to your room. Okay. <laughs> so what didn't make the list? You'll find lists of all different kinds of things out there like manicures and pedicures, um, massages, having lunch or dinner with a dear friend. Those are not for me personally, what I need. They don't fill my well in this way. I enjoy them but they're not self-care in the way these other things are for me, but they could be for you. So what? So what if you're tired? So what if I'm a little grouchy? So what if I have the occasional meltdown? Don't we all? This is a huge problem for most women. We are last on our own list. And by last, I mean, we're not even on the list. That's the truth. And we are sending a message to everyone around us that we should be last on their list or not on their list at all. What are we teaching our kids and the other people in our lives is that ignoring their needs is the right, even the noble thing to do. We are setting an example. We can treat ourselves better. We deserve to treat ourselves better and be better examples. It's affecting our health. Many diseases and autoimmune disorders can be triggered by long-term chronic stress and fatigue. 
I've been struggling with adrenal fatigue and thyroid issues for years. And it's because I pushed myself too hard for too long and I ignored my own needs. There's something called caregiver's fatigue, and it's a very common problem that goes right along with this. I am paying a high price with my health, health for not taking care of myself. Quality of life matters. And even if you have the best of everything and the greatest life, if you are so exhausted and worn so thin that you can't appreciate it, what value does it have? So we're going to commit. We're going to commit together. I know you are as overextended and tired as I am. There are so many aspects of our lives that we don't have a choice over, like traffic and taxes. But let's commit to giving ourselves at least 30 minutes a day doing something that rejuvenates us. It doesn't even have to be 30 consecutive minutes. You can break it up into three 10-minute whatevers. But let's choose not to overextend ourselves. Let's choose to make ourselves a priority and let's choose where we are going to be. Let's choose to make it right. So I want to know if you're in. If you are in, tell me in the comments right now. I want to know what you are going to do to care for your needs, even if it's one thing. And sometimes it's better to start with one thing because if you just say, I'm just going to revamp my whole life, then you, you'll crash and burn, just like New Year's resolutions. I've been, I've been working on this. this is, I am out of the hole. And my husband and I have been planning, we call it re-architecting our lives, how to make these changes. And we've been making these changes slowly. So this isn't day one for me, but it's like week four, three for me. And I've been making changes slowly. So I have three things. I'm committing to working out three times a week. And I'm not happy about it yet. I will be soon. I'll be very obnoxious about it. And I'll be like, you should work out. Everybody should work out. It's the greatest thing ever. You're going to feel so good. Let's do it. But I'm not there yet. Right now, I'm, I'm very whiny about it. I apologize in advance for when I get obnoxious. Number two, I'm committing to taking a quiet time each day for 30 minutes so that I can be a better version of myself when my family is around. And for myself, I just will feel better. And number three, I am committing to feeding my body to fuel my body and eating actual real food instead of Totino's pizzas and drink my water. So I want to know what you're committing to. And I want to know what, what this sparked in you. What, what thoughts are you having? What does this mean to you? Did you recognize yourself in this? Cause I'm, it's not just me. It's our society as a whole. It's specifically it's women. We struggle, I think, the most with this. Um, so let's talk about it. Nancy says, hi, April. Great reminder. We all get to choose. We get to choose some things, right? Like I said, many of these things were my own doing. I overcommitted and overextended myself. But like the leak in our house, that was not my choice. Like That was like a terrible surprise. Nobody wants that surprise. Um, and, uh, you know, so there are a lot of things that we can't choose, but there are, are things that we can. And, and it was a mess of my own making, a lot of it. So that when those other things happened, I was already so spread so thin that something like a water leak would just like, I can't even, I, I can't even cope. Like it made it that much worse because everything else was already so hard. Nancy says, I am super weak. I've never really thought about, but it is ridiculous with you 100%. Oh my gosh. It's so, I've always had a weak upper body. Maybe everybody does have a weaker upper body. I don't know, but I've always had a very weak upper body, um, just naturally. And, uh, it's so bad right now. It's embarrassing. I've never been able to do a pull-up. 
like in my whole life. Right now, I don't think I could even hang on for dear life. It was bad. I, I'll, we'll talk, I'll have to tell you about it when, when we talk about the exercise routine, but it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing how bad it is right now. <laughs> I, the last time I was this week was right after the birth of my third. So I had five babies in three years. So I was basically pregnant for three years. And the first one was the triplet pregnancy, which really did a number on me. And that was a high risk pregnancy. So I was on bed rest for the whole, whole 31 weeks, you know, anyway, it, I, this is like the second weakest, like physically weakest I have ever been in my whole life. And it's terrible. Uh, Tammy says Oreos. Ugh. Or is that a challenge? Is that one of your challenges of eating stuff that's not good for you? <laughs> so, you know, I, this is what I tell my kids. I'm such a hypocrite. We'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I tell my kids because I haven't been following this. Sometimes you, you eat things just because they taste good. Not everything you eat has to be like prime nutrition. Oreos and milk is really tasty. Birthday cake, delicious. I'm not such a fan of Halloween candy, but um, I, I love chocolate covered pretzels. Sometimes you just popcorn. Oh my gosh. Doritos. I have my, I like salty stuff. So Doritos and corn chips, that's like crack for me. Sometimes you eat it just because it tastes good, but we try to follow the 80, 20, 90, 10 rule. 80% of what we eat is fueling our body, tasting good, right? Like, but also providing nutrition. And then the other 10 to 20%, we just, it just tastes good. You know, like there's no necessarily, necessarily no nutritional value to it, but we enjoy it and that's okay. But I have been just eating garbage because it's easy and fast and my body is not thanking me for it. And there's no way I'm going to get stronger eating Todino's pizzas. Please. <laughs> yeah. Nancy says, this is so on time. I'm a type two diabetic. Ridiculous. Just started eating well. I will reverse this. Nancy, that I am sorry to hear that. That is, that is hard. That's hard. And you, uh, you know, I have a friend who reversed her diabetes through changing her eating. And so I'm not a doctor. I'm not your doctor. I don't know your particular circumstance, but my friend did. Um, Maddie did. So Maddie, if you're here, why don't you if, just comment on Nancy's comment? Um, because if her, Maddie's story is amazing. It, she changed her, she, I, I don't know all the, I don't want to say her details wrong, but she was a diabetic and on insulin and, um, she reversed it through lifestyle changes. She changed her eating and she changed her health and she changed her life. So, um, it is possible. Someone else says this couldn't come at a more perfect time. I've been eating like a teenager while my husband who does all of our cooking has been out of town. Yeah. I, I really have a hard time justifying making a meal for myself. Part of it's straight up just laziness. I just, I don't want to, like, I don't want to get stuff out. I don't want to make stuff. I hate making lunch. Like I've always hated making lunch. I don't want to clean it up after, but I'll tell you one of my favorites is, uh, eggs, eggs and toast. I love eggs. I can make some scrambled eggs or some eggs over easy and, uh, an English muffin or some toast or whatever fast minimal cleanup, just the skillet real quick and, um, put my plate in the dishwasher. So that's a go-to for me. There's also this, oh my gosh, this recipe I saw on Instagram. I sent it to several of my friends who all enjoyed it. I haven't done it. Although my husband bought the stuff at the store for me, it's arugula and a soft egg, like a poached or egg over easy, a little olive oil and some everything, but the bagel seasoning, I think that's our, and you just toss it delicious. Like that would be fast and easy and really tasty. So I just love eggs. 
I could eat eggs all the time, but that is actually fueling my body, right? But it's also delicious. So um, I used to make like jar salads or just prep salads like at the beginning of the week. We used to have a thing. We used to have a system, my husband and I, because we both work here, right? We both work from home and we would prep lunches for the week we just we we both just this isn't just me he has been every bit as busy as I have been but you know today I'm speaking my own experience but yeah we have to Lori says I would love to know any tips on how you fall asleep well yeah if there's a lot of if a lot of people want to hear about it I mean I still it's gotten a lot better there have been a lot of different things it's been a battle for years, like 10, 12 years now. Um, but I would uh, be happy to share that another day if people, if, if people are interested. Michelle says, I so need to hear this often. Me too. And I was hearing it. Like my husband kept saying this to me. You need to go to a yoga class. You, he's the one who started making me go on the walks with him. I'd be like, I don't have time. I don't have time. I am, I've am. i got to get this done. I have to. And he'd be like, no, we're going on a walk. Go get your shoes. We're going now. And he would, um, yeah. And I just, I couldn't even, yeah. I had so many excuses. All for like the seemingly good reasons. Like I had a lot of responsibilities and things that had to get done, but I was dying. It was killing me. Kathy's in. Yes, Kathy. I'm so glad you're in. Like, I don't have any plans like for a challenge or anything like, but maybe we should. I just, I need accountability. I skipped my workout yesterday. That means I have to do it today because I don't want to. I'm a big whiny baby right now. It hurts. <laughs> it's not even a hard workout. That's the worst part. Uh, someone else says, I am in better nutrition and yoga. Good for you. What kind of yoga do you like to do? Do you do it at home? Do you do it at a studio? I can't see who said that. So I would love to know. And Kathy, you got to tell us what you're committing to. Audrey says, I'm in. Find some type of exercise that I can tolerate. Yes, Audrey. Thank you for joining me. We will do it. We can do it. And and once we get into it, we'll be annoying. We'll be so annoying. But it's okay. We'll be fit. We'll be strong. I'm going to have Michelle Obama arms. Like, that's my goal. Also to be able to support my body weight. And just like hold on to a bar would be nice too. But like having those cut Michelle Obama arms. Like every time I think arms, I'm like, that. that those are the arms I want. That's what I want my arms to look like. But mostly, I just want to be strong. I don't have strength or stamina. My body feels weak, and I, I hate that feeling. Nancy says, I'm moving into my own place after an eight-year relationship. That is a big deal, and you definitely need some self-care. That's a huge, huge change in your life. So uh, what are you going to do to, what are you going to commit to for self-care? Kathy says, I'm going to have to check out number 18. What's number 18? Did I say something was number 18? Maybe you're responding to somebody else. This all shows up in one line for me, so I can't tell. I don't know what number 18 is. Someone else says, I'm in. I'm aiming for sleep, nutrition, and water. Excellent. I can't see who said that. Um, but, you know, as far as the nutrition, for me, I'm just adding things in. Like, instead of, like, taking things away, that's not really my problem. I'm adding things in. I'm going to make sure I get you know, enough protein and vegetables. Carbs are not my problem. White refined carbs are not my problem. 
got more than I need, <laughs> but I do need more protein and vegetables. So I'm adding protein and vegetables and that's what I'm doing. Cherry says, I'm in, lie on the belly for 30 minutes to relax and quiet time, hydrate myself and get protein. Those are excellent. I love that. Nancy says, I don't think we ever see ourselves as others do until we get that aha moment. This was a great one. Thank you, April. Well, you're welcome. And I totally agree. I totally agree. Like other people could see I was driving myself to crazy town and exhaustion. I, well, I reached a point I could see it too, but, um, it, you know, several people were expressing concern about the pace I was keeping. And I've even had, some of you have even emailed me or messaged me and said, you look so much better than you did six months ago. Like you looked tired and sick and very unwell, like not, not saying anything negative about my appearance, but just I looked unwell. I was unwell. I was not, I was not well. I'm much better now than I was, but I hope to be even better in six more months. Kathy says, I try to do all those things. The caretaker aspect is especially relevant right now. Alzheimer's is a terrible disease. Oh, Kathy, I am so sorry to hear. That is, that is a terrible disease. And the caretakers, I mean, that is a 24 seven weight and responsibility. And I know it can feel like there's definitely no time for me, but it's even more important that you make some time for yourself or you won't be able to care for your loved one. Like if it helps to think about it in that perspective, if that's what it takes to make you do it, that if I don't take care of myself, I can't take care of the person I love, then that's what we have to do. Nancy says, I'm in. Last week was bad and I'm ready for change. Started going to a Bible study today, doubled my walking time and going to make sure I have healthy food in the refrigerator just for me. I love it. Those are all awesome excellent, excellent things. Nancy, we have several Nancy's here today. Nancy says, now my legs are weak. Awful. Oh, my legs are weak too, but my arms are worse. <laughs> like I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate down dog in yoga right now. Like I wouldn't be, my arms would be shaking trying to hold myself up. It's that bad. It's really bad. Rochelle says, thank you for choosing this topic. You're right. This is a great time to do a reset focus. I'm going to commit to intentionally doing some sort of exercise three times per week. Yay, Rochelle. And then you'll be obnoxious with us soon. Soon we'll love it and we'll all be annoying in the best kind of way. Oh, Tammy says, yes, I eat Oreos instead of real food. They're easy, right? It's just easy to grab. They're right there. They taste good, but they don't fuel our bodies. So Nancy, what are you going to... Oh, no, Tammy, sorry. There are so many, there's several Nancys, right? You're sandwiched between the several Nancys. What are you going to grab instead of Oreos? Because you have to plan. You have to make a plan for it. That's my problem. If I don't plan for it, then I'm like, well, Totino's it is because I don't know. I don't, know, I don't have the time, energy, or brain space to think about it right now. So I have to plan for other things. So tell me what you're going to eat instead of Oreos. Nancy says, yes, I would love to hear Maddie's story. Well, um, I will try to remember to ping Maddie and tell her to come in here and, and respond to you because she's amazing, super inspirational. Nancy says, yes, April, check out Oat oatsovernight.com. Oh yeah. I used to make oats overnight. I'd like sprout them and all the things. I should go back to doing that. That's really good. Those are tasty. And you know, what's really good is oatmeal with peaches. I used to can a lot. I, I'm not canning right now, um, but I would can peaches. My, I hate canning peaches. They're like the worst stickiest, but they were so delicious. And putting the canned peaches with some cream on top of oatmeal is like one of my very favorite winter breakfasts. 
I need to do that. But I'll be buying store-bought canned peaches and juice because I'm not getting any peaches. Someone else says, I love eggs too. I make excellent soft boiled eggs. I bet you do. I, I, I don't think I've ever met an egg I didn't like. I love eggs. Someone else says, I've been exercising three times a week, two days of strength training with a Zoom trainer. Wouldn't do it without the trainer booked. Getting stronger is life-changing. Am I being obnoxious? LOL. Going to work on eating more plant-based and take my celery juice every morning. Add walks on non-workout days. Also need to work on bedtime routine to help me fall asleep. I like April's suggestions. You know what? We need obnoxious people. Like you obnoxious exercisers, like... You inspire us, even when you annoy us. Because seeing that other people are feeling good, it, it. But no, you weren't being obnoxious. All you did was say that you're doing it. No, like I, when I say obnoxious, I'm like, when I'm really into exercising because I'm feeling so good and I'm loving being strong and like you get those endorphins and, and then I'm just like, oh my gosh, you need to exercise too. Do you want me to make you an exercise plan? Because we could exercise together. We could do the exact same thing. Do you want to be um, buddies? You want some calendar stickers? I love to put stickers on my calendar. That makes me really happy. You want some too? Because I've got some extras. I'll buy you a calendar. What kind of exercise do you want to do? Do you have any videos you can borrow some of mine? Like that's what I'm talking about. Except even worse. That's a sneak peek of what's coming. <laughs> Michelle says, I keep ready cut cheese, salami, prosciutto, and pickles in the fridge for quick protein fix. Keeps me from eating the wrong stuff. I eat keto, so it's a perfect food for me. Oh my gosh. So it's like a charcuterie board in the fridge all the time. I love charcuterie. Mm, that's a great idea. I have to have some crackers with it though. Sorry, that's not keto, but uh, I need some crunch and balance, but that sounds delicious. Add an egg, mm, put it on a salad. Oh, yummy. You're giving me such good ideas. Susan says, I do a private yoga session once a week, but I need more. That's awesome. I, I love yoga. I love it. It is so good for my brain and my body. Um, I need to find a place here. I can do it here at home. I just really enjoy going to a, a live class. Um, but you know what, Susan, if you didn't ask, but I have a suggestion for you, try going to a class outside of your private yoga. That'll help you even more and it's something you're already doing and enjoying um but you're doing something at least once a week now just add another day you're already halfway there i love it tammy says i'm in breakfast and drinking water to start perfect those are both very doable very doable i love it Robin says, I am committing to arms and core every day during October. I want muscle tone to prepare for the holidays so that you can lift and carry and haul all the stuff we have to lift and carry for the next several months, like the leaf to the dining room table, because <laughs> everyone's coming over in that 30 pound turkey. Like I always make like a 30 pound turkey because we want the leftovers and like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And we're going to have turkey for a year. And I cannot lift the turkey in and out of the oven because my arms are too weak. Like that extension and down, I can't. My husband has to do it. That's terrible. I'm going to be lifting that turkey like with one hand this year. I'm going to be like, hey guys, watch me put it in the oven. Just like that. So good. I'm so strong. Um, Nancy says at 56, I'm taking a very low dose birth control for hot flashes. I've never taken birth control before. It makes a huge difference. May help balance for sleep. Also call your um, doctor. I also have a huge fibroid. Doctor doesn't think it will affect it. We're checking out. Yeah, you never, I mean, I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing hormone replacement therapy right now. Um, and we're still in the refining stages. <laughs> so mostly I'm like this. I'm on a pendulum swing. Uh, not really, but progesterone. I'm on progesterone for sleep is one of the things that I'm on. And it, it makes a difference. Susan says she's going to do more yoga at home. Susan, that's excellent. What days of the week are you going to do it? How many days a week are you going to do it? What days and what time? We got to get specific. 
Oh, Kathy says Brooke Castillo episode number 18. Yes, it's such a good one. It's, well, they're all good, but that's such a good one. She's going to walk three to four times a week, drink enough water, do her physical therapy exercises, and read more fiction. Yes, those are all excellent. But is that going to overwhelm you? If Do you need to like pick one and start there? Because we get, we get excited and we're like, I'm going to just totally redo my whole life right now. And then you just, they're like, that's too much. I can't handle it. So think about if that would be too much and do you need to narrow it down? And then which ones would you pick? Let's see, Indelo1995 says, I can't read historical fiction to switch off because I nitpick the details and it drives me daft if there are inaccuracies. Well, yeah, if you're a history buff, that would. Well, it's for, that's like for me, if I read the books and then I watch the movie, I just sit there and go, that's not how that happened. That never happened. They left this up. I, leaving things out is one thing, but like changing the storyline entirely, you just made that up. That wasn't in the books. Why did you add that in there? That was not necessary. That 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 makes me crazy. So I can see how that would make you nuts. I'm reading about history that I don't know well enough to nitpick. So I guess that's my saving grace. Or you could read books that are based on historical like beyond historical fiction, like where they're completely uh, like Game of Thrones. If you've read those books, um, that's based on um, the, the War of the Roses in the British monarchy, but it's totally different names, like a totally different world. They added some zombies, you know, just, but as far as like the what's going on with the royal family they took that from the war of the roses and, and then it doesn't matter if it's accurate you just it's fiction fiction nancy says committing to healthful food zumba through community ed and exercising in my soon-to-be second bedroom sorting exercise creativity room that's excellent as long as it's not too much Clorinda says apples. Oh, I do love apples. I, I do eat apples. Sometimes with my cheese and crackers and pepperoni, I would also have apples. Like as my penance or I do love apples though. I love fruit. Tammy says oatmeal. Clorinda says oatmeal with a small scoop of ice cream. That's little, that's dessert. <laughs> that's totally dessert. Oh, somebody likes my stickers. You want some of my stickers? I actually, I'm not lying. I totally have stickers for my calendar that I put on when I do my exercise. It's so gratifying to have a paper calendar on the wall, just like a kindergartner or a toddler give me a sticker. I can put it on my calendar. And um, I feel so good about myself. <laughs> you think I make these things up? I don't. I really don't. In fact, I had some emoji ones. I, I made a count. My daughter wanted to work on her flexibility. So I got her this flexibility yoga online thing. Like the focus was flexibility. And, um, and I'm like, but you have to actually do it. You know what I mean? Like, cause she wasn't doing it. She said she wanted, I'm like, but it, just downloading it doesn't make you more flexible. You have to actually do it. And it was only 15 minutes a day. So I made her a calendar and I gave her the emoji stickers, but I only gave her the poop emojis. <laughs> cause she, she's like, oh, mom, you give me the poop emoji ones. I'm like, those are the best ones. You're welcome. <laughs> My poor children. Anyway, get the stickers that make you happy. Poop emojis make me happy, but you could be aliens, soccer balls, whatever. I'll share my stickers. Someone else says, I am in working on being stronger physically and mentally. Good. What are you going to do to make that happen? You got you to gotta be specific. Audrey says, make two 15-pound turkeys. 
no, that's for wimps. <laughs> Although that would give me more skin. The skin's actually my favorite part. I just want the skin. You all can have the meat. Um, but that's like double the prep. It's the preparation is my problem. Although I can honestly say it never occurred to me to make two 15 pound turkeys. But no, I just want, I want to lift that 30 pound turkey by myself and not almost fall into the oven like Hansel and Gretel. Kathy says, I love your demo of putting your turkey in the oven this year. <laughs> Great visual. Well, we'll get it on film then. I'll be in my pajamas because I prep it the night before, get up early, walk out and like preheat the oven and pop it in. But um, we'll see if I manage. We'll see. I did used to wait tables, you know, so I'm like, I've got the action, but it's been a very long time. One of you says at 67 with diagnosis of osteoporosis, weight bearing exercises, low carb diet and keeping an intentional heart of gratitude. Oh my gosh. Gratitude. Yes. Huge. That's all about that mindset and exactly weight bearing exercises is one way that we prevent and treat osteoporosis as women our bones weaken as we age. Weight-bearing exercises is one of the ways you keep them strong. So thank you for mentioning all those. Tammy says, Amada is a wonderful product. I don't know what that is. Kathy says, it will not overwhelm me because I'm already doing the walking, drinking water, and reading nonfiction, just being more purposeful about physical therapy and switching off to fiction sometimes. And that's perfect. You're just adding on to what else you are already doing a fantastic job with. I love that. Blessed to be curly says, I am already working on my nutrition. I will commit to exercising three times a week. Yes. We should come up with a name for our obnoxious club of exercisers when we get obnoxious. I'm not there yet. I'm in, I'm in the whiny club, the whiny baby club right now. But I will be in the obnoxious club. So if anybody has a name for us, when we get obnoxious, let's hear it. And if you're already obnoxious, you can like be the founding members and we'll join you when we're ready. Mm, Nancy says, "Over oats overnight is something you can order. It has 22 grams of protein, great flavors and convenient packs, lowest sugar. I'm not a rep or anything. I just found it. Oh, okay. Like making overnight oatmeal in your slow cooker is a thing. That's what I thought you were talking about. Because I, I used to do that all the time because we feed our kids a hot breakfast. And that's just an easy one that can be done, like prepped the night before and then you wake up and it's just ready. Okay, I'll have to look at that. Robin says, me too. I love stickers for my journal where I record and plan my daily life. Yeah, I mean, really, we're all seven-year-olds, aren't we? Somewhere down deep. Stickers. They work. They just do. Um... Oh, someone says oatmeal, canned pumpkin, pumpkin spice, and nuts. That sounds tasty. Tragically, no nuts in our house. My daughter has an allergy, but um, the rest sounds delicious. Well, the nuts sound delicious too. I'll be honest. I love nuts. Um, Kathy says, I have all kinds of stickers. I cut off the pics on all those address labels they send you. Well, that's clever. That's very clever. Cindy is in. Thank you for putting your name, Cindy. Starting small. One, drink eight glasses of water every day. Two, do some type of exercise. Walk, bike, elliptical. 20 minutes twice a week. Three, eat more vegetables and less chocolate. I know I won't give up chocolate, but I will eat less and add veggies in at least two meals a day. Those are very specific, very doable. I love them. You don't have to give up chocolate. I mean, obviously moderation or whatever, but you don't, have, you don't have to give up the stuff you like. We just need to eat some more vegetables. Let's add some vegetables in. I love it. Tammy says Alton Brown's turkey recipe is the best. Any Alton Brown recipe is the best. He's, he's my celebrity crush. I loved watching Good Eats. I have all his books. When we lived in Atlanta, we totally got our cars serviced at the same dealership. So... It was like almost, we were almost best friends. He just didn't know it. I just, I just know 
that if he could ever taste my bread and my scrambled eggs, he would be like, you're right, we should be best friends. I just, I just know. He doesn't know what he's missing out on. Robin says, here's a great name, stunningly fit. That is a good name. Is it obnoxious enough though? <laughs> like, but I like that one. I like it. That's a good one. Rochelle says, remember, let's get physical by Olivia Newton-John. We could be, let's get obnoxious. <laughs> as long as we don't have to wear the shiny spandex. Like, <laughs> gosh, I just can't wear that, that stuff. Like, but we could totally be, let's get obnoxiously fit. Tammy shared Alton Brown's recipe, turkey recipe. I'll be honest. I make a, an incredible turkey. I do. I hate the word moist and I hate the word juicy, but there's no other way to describe my turkey. I make a fantastic turkey. I don't think it's Alton Brown's recipe though. Um, it's a, it's a variety of recipes that I think I've melded together, but, um, it's, it's a good one. And, um, Okay, I have to hop off. I'm supposed to be in a meeting right now, apparently. Totally lost track of time. I love all of this. You are all the best. We are going to do this. Let's think about how to make this uh, a challenge. And um, thanks for being with me. And I will see you in a week. <laughs>